a chosen generation. The blessings of inconsistency can hardly be sought. It is hard to find it, akin to groping around in the dark. Yet, as the maxim goes, to every problem, there is an opportunity. We can say that the only thing about inconsistency is the acknowledging that attribute in the guilty. Maybe we could squeeze in a stop clock is right twice in a day there. And if you can think of another positive of inconsistency or an inconsistent person, please add these in the comments section. On the contrary, we can reel off umpteen discomforts or cons as opposed to pros of an inconsistent person. See 2 Peter 2, 14. And really, given a choice, we would rather live with someone who is stable, mentally and physically, predictable, and can be understood. See 1 John 4, 1. Whether this is a ruse enjoyed by the psychopath to retain control or some perverse enjoyment which is possible, though I wouldn't know. Now we can say that all of us have some sort of inconsistencies to some degree. All are guilty, but here the theme is about those who are consistently inconsistent. I will not endeavor to expand on the reasons or diagnose the inconsistent, or come up with how to deal with such at a circular level. It suffices that there are methods for sure, left to the experts in the world to decipher and declare. Christ condemned the religious leaders of his day for duplicity. See Matthew 23, 27. There was a time when anyone accused of the crime of complexity, introducing intricacy and complication into criminal proceedings, would be jailed as it was a grievous charge. But the phrase has lost its edge in our day, leading to a careful conclusion of what days we live in, perilous, as stated in 2 Timothy 3, 1. Now, here he puts his finger on the pulse, as it were, that the intention of being such-minded is to portray what they are not, righteous whilst being the very opposite, with evil intentions and manifesting the prophet Jeremiah's words about the desperately evil heart. See Jeremiah 17, 9, and Paul's in Romans 1. The other intention or consequence of being an inconsistent person is to love preeminence, for it is a generally accepted fact that the world hates the truth. See John 7, 7. And there is no lie or getting away with lies more effectively than hiding behind the inconsistent cloak, swaying or swinging with the tide, yea today, nay tomorrow. This is a huge tool in the hands of the ruling elite, as some claim. Also, see Matthew 27's account of Christ's judgment by Pilate the governor. The root cause analysis of these are disobedient to God, sins, transgressions against his holy laws. What sort of inconsistency do we have today? We have pretend homekeepers, fake rulers, unqualified employees, fake employment-seeking credentials, dubious business people, unfaithful spouses, face versus mind discordance, false peacemakers, tricky wards, deceivers, backbiters. The list is long. As mentioned, common amongst all classes are double standards and lies. See Titus chapter 1, verse 12. A person who changes his credentials to match a job application, a wife or husband who do not abide with to provide or keep home requirements. See 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 35 and 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 4. Chaste and caring, sacrificial and lacking backbiting in accordance with clear scripture stipulations. One who occupies the pulpit and practices in the church what he condemns in other churches. See 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 17. The one who pretends to follow but harbors furtive desires to take over the reins, where the thoughts differ in contrast to the facial expression, smiling whilst digging in the night. See 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, for example. One who changes God's designed purpose, whether body or its use, for another. See Romans chapter 1, and so on. How does one live with an inconsistent person? What are the scriptural recommendations for this? We are to challenge one another if this is acted out, especially amongst believing church members. And if there are no changes, bring the matter before another in then the church. See Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 to 17. We are to separate ourselves from such a person as Christ addressed the religious leaders but kept no company with them. We are to seek to rescue such a person, ensuring that we ourselves are not scalded. See Jude chapter 1 verse 23. We are to pray continuously and for kings so that we may have a peaceful life. 
See 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. For it is for certain that an inconsistent person, or liar, does not endear peace. We are to love one another and forgive, not charging each other with a plurality of sins frequently, thereby discouraging a brethren. See 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 4 and 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 11 to 12. We are to keep company with believers as iron sharpens iron and seeing, encouraging one another is good for the soul and a command of Christ. See Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 and Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17. There are times when we refrain from embrace, but only for a time. Paul was in prison and John on the island of Patmos. Peter was incarcerated and King David was in the cave longing for the waters of the Bethlehem well. See 2 Samuel chapter 23 verse 15. Therefore, except for times of visitation, see 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 12, we maintain fellowship. We are to keep up the means of grace, minister the word, and remind ourselves daily of our station, privileges, and blessings. Therefore, leaving little room for the devil who finds work for the idol, and he roars about an old foe who is smarter than us, save the indwelling spirit and doesn't miss a trick. See 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 14 to 20 and 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. We are to give our resources to the work, to promote the spread of the gospel, our greatest of callings, without rest. See 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58. For rest awaiteth every child of God, especially those who work honestly without guile or intention to make merchandise of gods and other people. Now we come to the main blessing of being in the kingdom, that we worship an unchanging God. See James chapter 1 verse 17. If it be onerous to live with a flipper, slippery eel, or rattlesnake, see Matthew chapter 11 verse 30. How much more comforting to know, have indwelling and be associated with one who changes not, without a shadow of turning, firm as a rock, whose name is Jehovah, I am that I am. See Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. He made this world which stands still today without major alterations. He promised to and has left his own to minister to us unfailingly. He rewards everyone according to their deeds. See 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse 21, Psalm 18 verse 20, Jeremiah 25 verse 14, which we see constantly, especially in a world that, though claims peace, peace is promised no real peace until our Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, Shiloh, comes, and continuing absence of peace for them outside the household of faith, see Revelation 22 verse 15. He promised Christ and he came, promised no more worldwide flood and only skirmishes that he will one day remold, see Revelation 21 verse 1, judge the world at Christ's coming with his elect, and we see evidence of this, in that water and stone do burn in fire. He gave his word, and many were the company that published it, see Psalm 68, verse 1, Isaiah 52, verse 7, wherein man's conditions of sinfulness are stated and we find it so, especially those who have repented, know the gravity of our transgressions, having been shown our plight and condition, see Psalm 51. His word went out with power and saved countless people, see Genesis 13, verse 16, Revelation 7, verse 9, 19, verse 6. He hasn't left his world alone, visiting it with redemption and judgment. The world has proven him right for hardly any day goes by without some self-inflicted tragedy witness against ourselves, whether in fiction or reality. See Ezekiel 16 verse 23, Revelation 8 verse 13. Why would you reject the God who is able, or when conscience speaks, troubles us after we wrong him or slight his command? We clamor for justice every day showing a shared nature with our maker. See Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Why will we not turn, O human race, in spite of all the evidences before us? See Psalm 107, verse 19. It is futile to fight. There are umpteen folks amongst you who testify daily to his goodness with their conversation. That chosen generation, wouldn't you strive to join them? See Luke chapter 13, verse 24. The angels await, see Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, to sing your welcome and usher you into the beautiful Jerusalem, where peace and joy reigns. Why would you remain in an unstable situation with a beguiling leader whose doom is writ, see Revelation chapter 20 verse 3, and only wants to bring as many as possible down with him? 
Choose the Lord, his is a strong tower, see Psalm 61 verse 3. Mighty to save and deliver, he came once as promised, see Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, and as promised he will return, having left his, the earnest of the Spirit, see John chapter 14 verses 16 to 18, and the word of the living God, see John chapter 1 verse 14, come to him my friends. The hymn follows next. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy path throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee, how great the Great God, and sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. I'll bring the I wonder and see the stars as sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountains, and hear the Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When I have found that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I first can take it in. That on the cross my burden gently bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home for joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim 
my God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. How great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art.